And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hey, Ma, the original rule boy, the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be taking laps around an island of Jamaica. In the game called Jamaica from Gameworks, for two to six people, uh, it's uh, 30 to 60 minutes, usually around the 30 to 40 minute range. It is a racing game, but not just any racing game. A racing game with some dice, but the dice don't do everything. There's actually some strategies in this game. Components and artwork are cool. Ugh, I think I might be getting ahead of myself. Let's go to the island and show you how you race. Before we get started, check out how awesome the artwork is on this box. This is the top of the box. Really amazing artwork. And then if we look at the front of the box, it looks like the front of a treasure chest that you would open up. Really cool artwork, really good idea. Looks great. Now as we open the box, I also want you to see how cool the inserts and stuff are inside. First, look at a really cool rule book that comes here. I'll show you how this in a minute. And then we have the board, which is gorgeous. And then look at the inserts and the components here. We have some gunpowder, some dollar bills, the food. Look how nice the dice fit in here. Uh, all the ships have their own little specific place where they go in. Then we have the little things that we're going to store our goods in. And you lift this up, and there's some more stuff. And then here's all the pirate cards. You lift this up, and then there's a spot for the treasure cards. You lift this up, and there's some more stuff here. It's just a really, really well-designed inserts. A lot of times in my games, I end up taking the inserts and throwing them away. Not with this game. This game has uh, an amazing insert. Also, the rules fold out like a treasure map into this big poster, which is really cool. I mean, look at it. It has different areas of the map. It shows you which way to go to the treasure map, how to play the game. It's just a really cool thematic way to have a rule book. Even look at this. This is the back of the game board. They really you know, did top notch here. Even the back of the board just looks like a lot of coins. Really cool. They went the extra mile for sure on the components when you flip the board over. Again, look at the artwork, amazing. Now before the game starts, you get to pick not just your color like any old game, but your color comes with its own character. Look at this, Edwin Drummond is the black character. Olivier Levisseur is the green one. Look at the artwork on these, really cool and thematic. Mary Reed is the uh, purple. John Rackham is red, Samuel Bellamy is blue, last but not least, Anne Bonnie is yellow. Okay, the game board here is set up. Each person gets their little, uh, uh, their ship here that has five different places that you can hold food, gunpowder, or money. Everybody takes the cards of the color and captain of their choice. The starting player has the compass here, which makes him the captain. And as we see, we have some dice, some treasures, some gunpowder dice at the start. We have treasures amongst the board. So let's talk about how it, how our turn works. Whoever the captain for that round is going to take the two dice, and they're going to roll them. Six and a two. Now, everybody picks up the top three cards from their draw deck, which essentially is this. We get to look at them. Let's take a closer look at these. Now, here's the three cards I drew. Again, check out the artwork in this game. Stellar quality all over the place in this game. So here's my three cards. And what they tell you to do in the directions, which makes sense, is you hold these three cards in your hand and you kind of put them like this. So that what you can see are the icons on all three cards very quickly. Now if you remember, I as the captain rolled a six and a two. I get the choice to put the six on the left or in the morning or on the six on the right and at night time. The left side is sort of thought of as morning actions. The right side is thought of as night actions. So if I place this like this, of course, here I would get six gold and then I would get two gold. So if I were selecting this card, it wouldn't matter which order these are in. Uh, here it tells me go backwards. Here it tells me go forwards. So I could either uh, swap these around and I would go backwards two, then forward six. So essentially I would move forward four total on one turn. Here I could get two gold and then move forward six or get six gold and move forward two. So it's my choice. So what would we like to do here? I think I'm gonna go move backwards two and then forward six. So what I get to do is essentially I put the cards that I don't want face down back into my draw pile. And then I put this one face down in front of me so everybody knows this is what I play, but it's face down so nobody knows what I'm doing yet. Now as the captain, I'm gonna put these on the board. So again, I'm gonna move backwards two and then six. So I'm gonna put the two here for morning. 
and the six here for Knight. Now that I've chosen which order these are, all the other players are then going to look at their three top cards, and now that they know the order, they're going to look at their three cards and see which one they want to do. And when they're ready, they'll put their card face down. Once everybody is card is face down, starting with the captain and working its way apart, one at a time, we flip them face up so everybody can see, and then we resolve our movement. So first, I'm going to go backwards too. Now I'm the green guy. Let's go look at how this works a little bit closer on the board. Now we're gonna go backwards too, which is fine. I'm gonna go back one, two. Anytime you see a space with these uh, squares on them, it means you're out to sea, and this is how many food you have to feed your pirates that are on the ship. Three. Well, we all know that in my little pirate thing, I was given three food to start the game. So I'm gonna take these three and pay them to the bank, so as I paid my three food. And now if you remember, I'm gonna go forward six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I land here at the little pirate. Anywhere you see one of these uh, cool skull icons, there's gonna be a treasure. I get to take this, put it off the board, and I get to draw one of these treasure cards. So let's take a look at some of these treasure cards and show you what they are. These treasures can be good, but some of them are bad. There's 12 of them to start the game. Three of them are randomly throw out, so you never know how many bad ones are really in here. So I would get this, I would look at it secretly, and then I would get to put it in my ship face down. So this is actually a treasure map. This is one of the secret ones. This one allows me to look at one extra card. Instead of looking at three in my hand to decide what I want to look at, I get to look at four. Any special card like this gets to be put face up uh, in front of me so that everybody can see it. But to show you some of these other treasure cards, that's the biggest one. There's plus sevens, uh, plus fives, plus threes. Another special one, a cannon, allows me to get plus two in battle. This would be another special one. Um, this is another one that allows uh, me to make somebody else or myself reroll a die in battle. Uh, so there's some special ones. Here's a cursed treasure, minus three. So you can see there's some good ones, there's some bad ones, there's some special ones. Um, so you would draw one of these, and then you would essentially put it, uh, if it's a special one, face up. If it's not a special one, let's say I got this plus seven, I would put it face down in my boat. So here I had that face down treasure card, I would put it right down here in my boat. All my face downs would go just right here. So we've talked about sort of movements. Let's talk about some of the other ones that could happen. I want to show you some of the other cards that you may get, and depending on a roll. So some of the other cards, again, look at the artwork. Gold and gold. You would get gold for both morning and night. Here you would get gold in the morning, then move forward. Here you get gunpowder and food. So let's talk about this for a little bit. Uh, let's say this was the order they were put in morning and night, two and four. I would get two gunpowder, and I would take two gunpowder from the bank, and I would place them in an open, they call these holds, an open hold. And then the food, I would get four of those, and I would put those in an open food. Now let's say, for example, uh, this was all full. Let's say maybe I had this full. Let's say maybe I had some gold here. Now let's say I did this. If your thing is full, essentially, I would need to get gunpowder. I would need to empty one of these non-gunpowder folds, uh, holds completely empty. So you can't get rid of it. You have to take it in, and I can't get rid of the same thing. So. I would have to either get rid of one of these golds, and you have to take the whole thing and throw it out to make room for two of those gunpowders. And then for food, I would need to get three, and maybe I would have to throw away maybe some of my gunpowder to get the food. So it's an interesting sort of uh, um, uh, a weight balancing here as to figuring out how many of each do I want in, in, in each hold, because knowing that when I take in more goods, I might have to throw something out to sea. So we talked about here it would be paying food, if you here, you got a treasure. And if you're at one of these ones that shows the gold money, this is basically a port. And if you landed on one of these, you would have to uh, pay three or five dollars respectively for being in that port. If when I move to a square where you know you don't have time enough stuff to pay, you have to kind of go backwards. Sometimes that can help you. Uh, let's say this treasure hadn't been gotten yet, and I moved to here and I didn't have three food. You have to pay all the food you can pay, and then you move backwards until you can pay something. If I had $5, I would stop there and pay there, but let's say I had no money. I would go back one more, I still don't have any money. I go back one more, I can actually take for free this treasure. So sometimes not having enough to pay can actually pay off for you. The last thing you can really do is battle somebody. Anytime a ship on any action comes in the space with somebody else, let's say purple moved into green space, purple is now the aggressor and they are battling green. Now, what they want to do is they're going to roll this battle die here, and if they want to, before they roll, they can say if they want to use any gunpowder. Each gunpowder is essentially worth one extra uh, number. So let's say they use two gunpowder, they have basically plus two in battle. They roll the die, and they get a six. So six plus two, they have basically an eight attack. 
Now after that happens, the green guy can use some of his gunpowder if he wants, and then roll. And whoever's higher, if the green, if the purple's higher, and the, the winner, uh, they get to choose one of three things. They can either uh, steal a treasure from that opponent, they can steal any amount of goods in one of the holds from that amount, or they can, if they have a cursed treasure, they can give one of their bad treasures to that person. So winning a battle is pretty big. If you roll a gunpowder, you automatically uh, win the battle. Now this sort of happens over and over again. The captain is a new person each turn, and the game stops when one person's ship gets back to Port Royale. Now you'll notice there's some numbers here. What, at the end of that round, when someone gets here, the game's over, whatever place your ship is will determine how many points you get. For instance, this person would get 15 points to start with, uh, eight here, and as we can see, as we move this along, the points get down lower and lower and lower. And then we'll see here the green ship. He's behind this red line, and it's minus five. Anywhere behind this green line, you start with minus five points. So the closer you are to the end, the more points you'll get. Plus, from those points, you get to add all your dollars, all your treasures, and that's your final score. And the one with the most points at the end wins. All right, well, there's Jamaica. Okay, first things first. Holy crap. Component quality on this thing is amazing. The box, the directions, the instructions, I mean, the, the gold pieces, the chits, uh, the board, everything about this game screams awesome production quality. The artwork on your cards, on the board, on everything are just top notch. This, this game really cut no corners when it came to production value. It's amazing in that right. Now the game itself is endless amounts of fun. Now I'm not, I gotta tell you, I'm not very big on racing games per se. I, I, they're, they're just not something that I gravitate to. Uh, but I loved this game. My wife loved this game. All my, I play tested this with many different groups. I have yet to find one person who afterwards didn't say, oof, that's gonna go on my wish list. I mean, this is a winner. There's a reason why this game has gotten so much vibe and how much buzz it's gotten on the internet and Board Game Geek and having it be very high up. It deserves it. I love the fact that there's dice involved but the dice doesn't uh, absolutely tell you where you're going. The dice just allows your strategy to figure out, well, which is the best of both worlds? If I do this, I'll go here. If I do this, I go there. And there's a lot of decision-making involved, but it's not so deep that you can't play with the family. The little kids can play this game and still have fun, and you can still play it and have fun too. It's awesome. And even if there aren't any kids involved, you're still gonna have a blast. I played this with all adults as well. It goes over just as well. It's easy, it's fun, it's different. The strategy, the cards, the artwork, man, what a great game. Well put together, so much fun. I find myself playing this over and over again. I'm never getting sick of it. Uh, and it's just a blast to play. So if you're looking for a fun game that's good and family friendly, that plays up to six people and still does it under an hour, is easy to teach, is light, has great production quality, this is a no-brainer. This should be pretty much in everybody's collection. Whether you have a racing game or not, this is a must-have. You gotta get it much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>